Hello, and welcome back to Missionary Story Time. This is chapter two of Where the River Begins. Now, do you remember at the end of chapter one, Francis had promised Mr. Glennie that he wouldn't do foolish things like that anymore and he would try to stay out of trouble. Well, we'll see. I hope so. I hope he can keep that promise. Now, as far as the trouble from what had happened, that dangerous adventure with the rowboat, Francis didn't hear anything more about it. Dad had gotten in very late, and the next morning was Sunday morning, and Mom and Dad were up in their room arguing. Mom had a bad headache again. His little sisters, Wendy and Debbie, were kind of in bad moods too, and they were fussing with each other, and so Francis thought he was just getting out of the house. And he went out to the backyard, and started kicking his football around for a while. And then he noticed in a crack in the fence that went around the backyard, he saw someone was looking through and he realized it was Ram. And so Francis went over to the fence and he called Ram in and he said, hey Ram, do you wanna go to the secret hideout that I have? And Ram looked really worried and scared. And Francis said, no Ram, it's not dangerous. It's just a cherry tree. And so Ram and Francis went back to the back end of the yard and climbed up in Francis' cherry tree. And they sat there for a while talking together. Francis talked about football and Ram talked all about India and the things he missed in that country. And then Francis asked him, what do you think of school, Ram? Do you like school? No, Ram answered. No, I do not. How come? Francis said, it's okay. No, Ram said, I'm afraid of Tyke and Spotty. They say they're going to do something bad to me. What? Francis thought. Well, he knew who Tyke and Spotty were. They were older boys there at the school and Francis kind of thought they were cool and they had this gang. And he had always wanted them to sort of notice him and maybe he could be part of their gang. Why would they pay any attention to Ram? And so Francis asked some more questions and Ram explained that he said, I found their secret hideout. I found the gang's hideout. I didn't know it was theirs. I heard them talking. I saw them there. They saw me. They ran after me. And they said if I told anyone, they would do something bad to me. I am afraid of them. Well, then Francis really wanted to know more about this. Where was this hideout? And so he began to ask Ram more questions and he discovered that he knew where it was too now that Ram had found it. It was just right at the very end of the street where Ram lived. It was the last house. It was an old broken down house. No one had lived in it for a long time. And so as soon as Francis discovered he knew where the house was, he was sure he could find it, he said, oh, I'm going in now, Ram, see you later. Climbed down out of that cherry tree and ran to the back door into the kitchen, ran right into his father. And dad yelled at him and said, where had he been all morning? And he was supposed to be helping dad wash the car. And why didn't he ever do anything right? Francis was so mad, he ran into the kitchen. He was ready to kick one of the chairs when he noticed that mom was standing there in the kitchen. She was looking out the front window. She had her back to him. And he thought, he really missed mom. They used to have fun together. They used to talk together about all kinds of things that he was interested in. And, and Francis thought, if mom will go right now with me to the backyard, and maybe we'll sit under the cherry tree and we'll talk about things. And he thought if she would do that, Oh, he'd forget all about Tyke and Spotty and, and finding their gang. And he would stay home and he would help and he would be good. So he walked up to mom. Now she had her back to him. She didn't even know he was there. So when he said, mom, she jumped, it kind of startled her. And she turned around and she glared at Francis. And she just said, where have you been? You know you're supposed to be helping your father. Oh, Francis, you just ruined everything. And she turned her back to him. Francis made up his mind. 
he was gonna find that secret hideout of the gang and he was gonna try to join that gang just as soon as he could. Well, there was a whole week of school. Francis had no time to do anything like that. But then the next Saturday came and Francis stood at the front door of his house and watched as Mom and Dad and Wendy and Debbie drove away in the car to spend the day at an amusement park. Now they had asked Francis to go along, but he said he didn't want to go. He didn't think they wanted him to go. He didn't feel like he really belonged with them. He didn't feel like he belonged anywhere. And he wondered, could he belong in Tyke's gang? And so Francis decided he was gonna go find the gang's hideout. Well, he knew right where Rand's, Ram's street was. He went on the street, he went down to the very end, and there it was. It really was an old broken down house. No one had lived there for a very long time. Um, the front door was hanging open. There were boards nailed across the windows. And Francis looked around, it didn't seem like anybody was there. So he cautiously walked up to the front door and looked in, and it was empty. It was as much of a mess inside as it was outside. There were bottles and cans thrown on the floor with other trash, and there were cigarette butts laying around on the floor. Um, where there were cracks in the windows, they'd stuffed old dirty rags in there. The walls were all mildewy and moldy. There was a table and chair, an old one there in the middle, so Francis just went in and sat down. He thought he'd wait and maybe Tyke would show up. Well, he waited a long time, and no one came. He was just thinking he'd better be starting home soon because it was getting dark when he heard some voices outside in the yard. Francis got scared. He didn't know what to do. So he just went to the furthest corner in there, in the, inside the hideout. And it was a dark corner, so he kind of scrunched way down. And he thought if he'd be very still, maybe they wouldn't see him in there. It was dark inside. In came Tyke and Spotty and another boy, and the first thing they did was they went over and they lit a camping lantern that had been sitting on the table, but still Francis was hidden in the corner in the shadows and they did not see him. So he quietly listened as he heard the boys planning their next prank. They decided that they were gonna go out there on the street, there was a phone booth, and they were gonna smash it just for fun. Well, now here's a spot where we need to stop. They were gonna smash a phone booth. Remember how I said at the beginning that this was kind of an old fashioned story and there might be some things that were around today? Well, you don't find very many phone booths around, but maybe you've seen one. You see, when I was a little girl, we didn't have cell phones. There were no cell phones. Nobody carried a phone with them. You had a phone in your house, but it was plugged in. So it wasn't going anywhere. So if you needed to make a phone call when you were out somewhere, there were these booths along the street, just small little, I don't know, like a small little shack, it was called a booth. It had glass on the sides of it and a door, and you could open it, it was just big enough for one person to step in, and there on the wall would be a phone hanging. And if you had to call someone, you had to put in a dime or maybe a quarter. And if you did that, it would work and you could call somebody. That was a phone booth. And they were important things back then. That's what the gang was planning to smash. Well, as Francis was listening, maybe it was the dust in the shack, maybe it was the mold on the walls, but something made Francis sneeze. Of course, Tyke and Spotty heard that. Tyke came over him, he grabbed him by both wrists, and he pulled him out into the center of the room. And he said, what are you doing in here? What did you hear? And Francis said, it's okay, it's okay. I I'm not gonna tell anybody. In fact, I wanna help you. I can run really fast. So let me be like your lookout. I can help, I can join your gang. Well, Tyke thought about that for a minute. He said, oh, all right. If you wanna help us, then prove it. You run down to the end of the street and you look both ways. And when there's nobody coming, you come out and you signal us. Now you better tell us the truth and you better not tell anybody about this. Now scram. Well, Francis scrammed. <laughs> he ran to the end of the street, just like Tyke had said. 
he looked this way and he looked that way. There were no cars coming, no one was in sight. He stepped out and he gave them the signal and he watched as he saw the three shadowy forms running out of the hideout, out and down the street a bit, and he heard the crash of glass breaking. Then he watched as they ran off and Francis thought he'd better run off too. So he ran on home. But as he ran, did he feel guilty or sorry? No, not at all. He felt excited about what he had helped the gang do. Well, that week of school went on by with, with nothing exciting or different happening and Saturday came around again and Francis thought he just might go back to that street to see what the boys had done to the phone booth up close. And so he was there on Ram Street and he was looking at it and oh, sure enough, there was glass all over the ground. It, it was all broken. The door was kind of hanging on its hinge and he could see that the receiver, the part of the phone that you spoke into, was hanging down and he was looking at it and he was feeling proud. He was feeling proud of what he had helped them to do. Well, just then, Ram, remember this was the street Ram lived on, his house was over here just a ways. He saw Francis, so he called out, hey, and he invited Francis to come in and play with him. Ram loved to build things with all different kinds of building sets. So he was in there building a city and he invited Francis in. He told him that Ram's parents were out for a while and that he was babysitting his little sister, Tara, but she was already upstairs asleep in her bed. And so that they could have some time to play together. And they were having a good time. They pushed all the furniture back to make room for what they were building. And it was nice and warm in there because they had a little heater going in the corner. They were having a fun time together. And then Ram said he was hungry and he wanted a snack. But he said they didn't have anything in the house. So they could go down just a couple blocks on the street and buy something at the convenience store. So Francis and Ram left the house with Tara upstairs in her bed, but it was just a quick trip, they thought. They went down, they bought a snack, headed back up, and Ram went up to the door first to open the door, and as he opened the door, smoke came billowing out of the door, and Ram yelled, the couch, we pushed it too close to the heater. You call for help, I'll get Tara. And Ram tried to go up the steps to the upstairs, but three times he tried, but every time he had to come back down because he couldn't breathe. The smoke was so thick in there. And meanwhile, Francis ran across the street to the phone booth to try to call for the fire department. It struck him like lightning. He couldn't call for help. The phone was broken and he had helped to break it. We well, didn't know what else to do. So he ran as fast as he could home to mom. She called for help, the police, the ambulance, the fire department. Then they made their way back quickly to Ram's house. So when they got back there, they saw that the neighbors were already out with their water hoses and they were squirting water on it. And a man had brought a ladder over and he put it up to where Tara's window was in the upstairs bedroom. And he said, I'll get her, I'll get her. And he went up the ladder, but he yelled down, I can't see anything. I can't find her. Ram said, I'll help you. So he ran up the ladder right into the window. They went and soon they saw the man was coming out carrying little Tara and a neighbor had brought a blanket and had spread it out on the ground and they laid her there. Oh, Ram sat there and Francis's mother tried to say that everything would be okay and Ram said, is she gonna be all right? And soon the fire engine arrived and the ambulance arrived and Ram's parents got back from where they were. And as they put Tara in the ambulance, they heard one of the ambulance workers say, I think she's gonna be okay. Oh, they were so glad. As mom and Francis started walking back to the house, mom looked at him and she said, Francis, what were you doing? What happened? 
Francis didn't know what to say, so he just threw his arms around her. And he said, Mom, I'm so sorry. I try to be good. I promise I'll be good from now on. Whew. I hope so. All this trouble, all these decisions, these choices, and the gang, that's not going to help him. Do you think there's going to be more trouble? We'll find out next time.